So since I got my Vision Pro about a little bit over a week ago, I've been really wanting to figure out how to run retro games on it. And I've gone through like several iterations of running things in browsers or running um, through uh, the virtual screen mirroring on the Mac. And I found last night on the Vision Pro subreddit this post about running RetroArch. And basically you essentially download and build the source in Xcode and then deploy it to your Vision Pro. So I thought that sounds like that would be a really fun video to go through step by step from nothing to running the RetroArch on the Vision Pro. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. So credit where credit is due. Um, this was posted by user uh, underscore Ara is the, the person. And they've got step by step. It's really you know pretty simple easy to follow, but I ran into like a couple of hiccups here and there along the way. So I've backed everything out, completely deleted everything, and I've created some notes that I have in Notion about how I did the install and how it worked for me. So the main sections are going to be setting up Xcode first, then doing the build and install of RetroArch on the Vision Pro. Then we're going to go through and import a couple of game ROMs, get it set up, and then go through some of the configuration things that I've done, like getting my Xbox controller paired, um, setting up hotkeys, things like that. So first, let's get Xcode set up. Now, I don't even have Xcode installed. What we're gonna do is we're going to get that from the App Store. It's a free download on your Mac. You wanna be running at least Mac OS Sonoma uh, to do this, and you'll get the latest version of Xcode. So we see it right here, developer tools. We're going to download that. Okay, now we've got Xcode installed. We're gonna go ahead and open it, and we're gonna install the components that are necessary to do Vision OS development and iOS development. Okay, so we've got Xcode opened up. We're gonna go into the settings for Xcode here. And we're going to uh, add our iCloud account as well as the platforms. So if we go here to platform, we've got iOS. We're going to have that installed. There's also Vision OS with another seven gigs. We're gonna go ahead and download that. So while that's downloading, we're also gonna go and connect our iCloud account because that's gonna be a step later on where you're going to associate the app with your iCloud account as a developer. So we're gonna to go to accounts, we're gonna click the plus, Apple ID, and then we're gonna enter our Apple ID in, in the box here. Okay, so we've got our account set up, we've got under platforms, we've got iOS 17 and Vision Pro 1.0. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pair our Vision Pro device. So if you go up to the menu bar up here, and then you go to window, there's devices and simulators. And you'll see that there's no devices listed here along the side. I do have the simulators, so I can do like a Vision Pro simulator, but we need to actually pair our physical Vision Pro to the uh, Xcode environment on my Mac Studio. Okay, so now we're in the Vision Pro. We're going to uh, turn on developer mode as well as uh, send a pairing request to our Mac Studio so they can see each other kind of do that handshake. So we're gonna go to settings in the Vision OS and we're gonna go to general. And then right here, we've got remote devices. So we're gonna select remote device. It says this device is now discoverable and ready to pair. So over here, in Xcode, we see that the Vision Pro showed up. We're going to click pair. And then a number shows up inside the uh, Vision OS. So that is 761-888. It'll be unique for your device whenever you pair yours. So we're gonna hit connect right there. <clears throat> and now it's telling me that it's waiting to reconnect and that's because I need to turn on developer mode. So back in the Vision Pro, we're going to go down in settings to privacy and security. 
and then we're going to go all the way down to the bottom to developer mode. We're going to select that and we're going to turn that on and then we're going to have to restart the uh, Vision Pro headset and then it will do that connection to the Mac Studio. Okay, so we've got our Vision Pro uh, rebooted. We had to turn on developer mode. So now if we go into the settings and then we scroll down to privacy and security, we're going to see that developer mode is now on. If we go to general, we scroll down to remote devices, we'll see John's Mac Studio or the name of your device right there. And over here on Xcode, we see that uh, this is now connected and it's copying over the shared cache symbols from the uh, Apple Vision Pro. So that's gonna take a process, it's gonna take several minutes to complete. Okay, the next phase in this process is going to be to install RetroArch uh, from the Xcode project. What we need to do first is we need to create a folder to put all of the uh, RetroArch stuff then we're going to uh, clone the RetroArch um, source code. Then we're going to install it using a script, and then we'll push it over to the Apple Vision Pro. So first we're gonna open up Finder. We're gonna go into our home folder. I'm gonna create a folder called Xcode, so I can put all my Xcode projects there. Then I'm gonna create one called RetroArch. Once we have that folder created, we're gonna open up Terminal. And then we're going to go into that folder by just cd tilde slash xcode slash retroarc. That goes to your home folder to the retroarc folder. Then we're going to run this git clone command. That's going to get the resources downloaded into that folder for lib retro super. Next, we're going to go one level deeper into that folder. And then we're going to run this script right here where it's the lib retro fetch script. We're going to paste that into terminal and run that. It's gonna take about a minute to complete. While that's running, we want to go into this link which is the lib retro um, cores, the latest cores that are available. And you wanna download any of these cores for the games that you want to play. Now, what I'm going to do is I want to play NES, so I'm going to get the Messin core. I'm going to get the SNEX 9X core. I'm going to get Moopin 64, Gambit, which is for Game Boy, and MGBA for Game Boy Advance. Okay, so that script is done. I've also gone and I've downloaded and unzipped the cores that I want for these particular systems. And we're going to copy these and we're going to move them into a modules folder. So over in our RetroArch folder, we're going to go to Lib Retro Super. We're going to go to RetroArch. Then we're going to scroll down and we're going to go to PKG, this folder. Then we're going to go to Apple and then iOS and then modules right here. And we're going to paste in or move those particular cores. After that, we're going to open up our Xcode project one level up. So where we are in the modules folder, we're going to go up in a level into that Apple folder. And then there's this RetroArch iOS 13.xcode project. Okay, John from a week later. Uh, I did this test so many times that I actually ran out of uh, app IDs. So that's something to be aware of when you're using the free developer account. Um, you can only generate 10 app IDs per week. So I ran out of that while I was recording this. And um, here we are seven days later and we're gonna try again. We're right at the end of our um, RetroArch build in Xcode. So we're at the place where we've opened up the project file and what we need to do is we need to change the bundle ID and the development team for each of the three targets. Once that's done, we're able to um, install it on our Apple Vision Pro. So with the file open, that RetroArch underscore iOS 13 file, you're going to click on each of these three targets right here on the left-hand side. Then you're gonna wanna make sure you're at signing and capabilities. Then we're gonna drop this down and we're gonna select the personal team that we added at the very beginning of the video. So select that. And then where it says com.libretro, 
you're gonna wanna change that middle lib retro to something unique. So like, I'm just gonna do like John one, two, three, right? So we can change each of those. We're gonna go down here, gonna change the team name. Then we're gonna select this and we're gonna do John one, two, three. And then one more time right there. We're going to delete lib retro John one, two, three. So once we have that, now everything is good. We can go in the top status bar up here and we can select our Apple Vision Pro. It's the Vision OS device. You don't want the simulator, you want your physical device that you've actually uh, paired with your Mac. Once we've selected that, now we'll hit this play button right here and that will build the application and install it over on our Apple Vision Pro. Okay, so now we're getting this message that says we need to prepare for development. That's because we have to, you know, make sure that the device is unlocked. So I'm gonna put the headset on. Okay, so once this headset is on, then now it's gonna say that there's an untrusted developer certificate. So we need to hit okay. We need to go into our settings. And then down here under general, we're going to go into VPN and device management and then Apple development with my email address. We're going to trust that developer account, that developer certificate. Now that says verified, it's all good to go. We can close out here, go over to compatible apps, swipe over and there's RetroArch right there. We're going to open that up. And yes, we do want it to see our, um, uh, our local device network. So we're gonna click allow, and there we go. Now we can load cores, we can load content, we can get everything going. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to import a game so that I can show you like how you can get your game ROMs loaded so that you can load them and play them. So I'm gonna close RetroArch, and then I'm gonna go into the files application on my Vision Pro. <clears throat> And I can't show you where to download and get all of these, uh, these games, but we're going to uh, select one that I downloaded, which is just Super Mario All-Stars. So I've got that in my downloads folder. All of my games, I keep them on my NAS uh, box so I can like copy and paste them. But we've got Super Mario All-Stars.zip. We're going to click on that and we're going to copy it. And then on my Apple Vision Pro, when we go to that location, there's a RetroArch folder right there. We open that up. If we go down here to our downloads, we can paste that in right there. Now we've got this single game. Now you can add folders here. You can organize this however you want, but I'm just gonna paste it into the downloads folder. And then back in RetroArch, we can open that up. We can go to load content right here in the middle. And then there's our downloads folder. There's Super Mario AllStars.zip. And we're going to load that archive. And there we go. Now we've got Super Mario AllStars all ready to go. And if I go over here, and I've got this 8-bit um, do controller, it's already paired to my Apple Vision Pro. So the way you do that, <clears throat> is you take any controller, you put it in pairing mode, and then under your Bluetooth settings, you'll connect that device. And then you can see 8-bit do ultimate wireless is connected. So now in here, I can hit start and it's talking to the game and it's working just fine. So I can go here, I can uh, start playing Super Mario Brothers, the, the revamped version on Super Nintendo through Mario All-Stars. And there we go. All right, so that's it for this video. We went through how to prepare your environment for Xcode development, how to um, load up RetroArch and sign it with your developer account, get it installed on your Vision Pro. We talked about importing games,
I hope this video was helpful. If there's other things that you would like to see, building other applications for Apple Vision Pro or just different options for retro gaming, I'm happy to do that. Let me know in the comments below and uh, we'll make that happen. Thanks for watching.